What's up, guys? Anthony Cordova here back on the 58 Impala Convertible Lowrider build. And in this video, we're finalizing what we did in the last video on this left rocker and left quarter panel section by capping off the rocker, fully welding and prepping everything. And we're also installing this front left floor pan. So if you want to see how that's done, follow along. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It's an easy way to support the channel. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job. All right, without any further ado, let's get into the video. Woo! That's hail, buddy. It's freaking coming down. I like it, I like it. I don't even want to get out because I'm going to get all wet right now. Let's go, make the snow go. Ah, I'm going to get all wet, terrible. Oh shit, you see that? Now that's a fire. Well, I got here early this morning at nine, kind of early, and I took the door off, got the hinges off. When I looked inside the door, there was a heat ton of nasty ass, like sealer, like body, shits like foamy shit i'm like dude why do they squirt all that shit inside the cavities of this vehicle why do they do that like just to hide a couple little pinhole you know like you just the whole if you would have seen this car from the beginning and the whole well you can see it but i didn't show like all the undercoating it was clear indication that they were trying to hide shit they just did some shoddy ass metal work on this car and just were trying to hide it and left rust under welded sheet metal it was just freaking stupid the way they did this car originally but we're fixing it look at the positive grateful we have work to do so we're gonna fix the whole thing as you know and make this shit pristine a1 sauce so next on the agenda is to crawl up in this rear right there, right where those fins are at, crawl up in the hole where the floor, rear floor pan is gonna go and weld the rest of this floor to the inner rocker panel. And it's just a couple little welds that I gotta do, clean those welds up and then start fabricating for these floors and there's some pieces I got to make for the floors put the floor braces and the floors on this side right here just do this whole side of the floors from front to back and that's going to be a job in itself and then I'll jump over to the other side and it should be a little bit faster because I know what I'm looking at as far as what I got to do to make these panels fit and fit better because once you do one side it's pretty much the same thing but on the other side so i'll just go ahead and like i said i know kind of what i'm what i'm what i'm in for and that way i can just get going start doing the metal shaping on the other rocker and the other quarter lower quarter panel and then i know what, what shape i'm going for because i know what shape these were in so it'll be a lot quicker doing it a second time and I know exactly where I'm gonna cut like all like when you start with with when you start with something and you haven't done one prior or you haven't done it in a long time you're always gonna you're always gonna take longer and you're always gonna um, you know it's gonna take some time to figure everything out and figure out where you want to make your cuts where you want to but it, you know, measure everything out. So I kind of know exactly the measurements. And what's funny is on this, on this door, on the fitment of this door is I didn't line up the door prior to welding. I just trusted my measurements and I put it up there and I got like a basic, a basic idea of where I wanted it and compared to the other parts that were on there 
and I measured everything and I marked everything down. All these, all these writings on this, on this floor, I mean, on this door jam right here. And I had some writing on this quarter panel right here with some paint marker. All that shit meant something. Like it all measured out exactly where the old one was out before I cut it out and measured everything and wrote it down. That way I could just put everything back in without having to like line up the door perfect. And that's the way I was taught and that's the way I do it. It, it, re, it like when I was like just going, 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 I just wanted to weld this thing in there. It didn't, I didn't have to stop to like, oh, let me make sure the door's on perfect. You know what I mean? I put the door on and then I, I mean, I put the door on, kind of got it close and then I just welded it. And then I did line up the door after just, I'm like, you know what? Let me just for shits and giggles, make sure this door lines up, you know, but it was already all welded. So if it would have been off or the measurement would have been off, I would have been fucked, but I'd done this so many times that like, I know if you measure it out and if you stick to your measurements and trust your instinct and it, you know, it starts to look kind of like, okay, this is going back where it's supposed to go. And there's some, some signs because some of this stuff lines up pretty, you know, it lines up. Okay. So, you know, you, you can see kind of where things are going. So you'll know that it's going to fit. Okay. But I mean, if this thing was way off and this thing was a little bit off, if you really think about it, this floor brace on the back over here was, was, was kind of smashed in a little bit. And so I had to straighten that out. And it was after the fact when I welded some new parts to it and I didn't catch that till afterwards because I should have caught that before, but I wasn't really looking for it, you know, but once I started investigating more and I started getting more into the job, it's like, like this thing's this, if I would have had to, if I would have had to, to pull on this floor brace to shift it over this way luckily i just was able to spread it out and get that one side to just kind of go out a little bit with the porta power because if i would have had to 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 like pull on this side i would have had to cut off the existing structure for the for the inner quarter panel because i had already welded it on and i would have had to drill through that brand new part that i had already installed on that floor brace which is the inner rocker which hooks to it I would have had to drill four big ass holes, weld a, not weld, but screw a plate onto it with a nut and a bolt, like in four spots with the hook on it and then pull it with a chain. So it would have been a nightmare. I mean, it could have been done like, and I could have just welded the holes back up. You would have never known, but still the fact that I was able to just pour the power and push that floor and open that floor up a little bit and get it back into measurement specs is great. Shit, I almost forgot. First, I gotta cap these off right here. Bottom and top.
want to say it's officially okay to Mickey Mouse some shit like that real quick just to get it done. I just capped off the ends, two little spots, put some sheet metal up there that I found on the ground and trimmed it away as I was welding and just Mickey Mouse that shit and get done with it. Little stuff like that. I'm not going to sit there and make a template and freaking, you know, try to measure it or, you know, just freaking weld it. Get it on there on a straight edge, weld that to the piece that you want to weld it to and trim off the rest and then weld the outside and be done. Mickey Mouse that shit. But the rest, you better measure, you better freaking make templates if it's a complex piece. But shit like that, weld her up. Now that I'm looking under here, I gotta clean all underneath this rocker and this quarter panel up and still have to deal with this pinch weld where it's kind of flattened all out right here and stretched out because I had to do a bunch of body work on that existing inner rocker. And I'll trim that and make it all nice and flush so it looks like factory, original, nice. This thing was so beat up under here and had holes and all kinds of shit and they just bonded over it. So this is nice, it's all brand new. All brand new. Friday again and it's a big push to get this front left driver's side floor pan at least tacked in tonight before I go home so I today what got accomplished was I ended up capping the front of that rocker because it was left open aftermarket parts I ended up trimming the rest of my pinch weld on this left side, cleaning that all up, getting that nice and flush, nice and straight all the way across. Ended up DAing the bottom of that rocker in that quarter so that I can just later on, just give it a nice touch up and then primer all that stuff. I ended up finishing welding all my floor and my reinforcements in on the back section by the back seat on this left side had to go in where the convertible top motor is, or cylinders are at and weld all that in there so that everything's nice and strong. Weld that convertible top cylinder structure where all that stuff is held in all together. Weld that to the floor. Did all that and I had to fuck with that flange so much on the front of this tow board and on these floor pans because they're just terrible fitting. 
So I reshaped all that and trimmed away the excess that I'm not gonna use of that floor pan of the existing on the body, on the actual floor of the car and trimmed my floor pan aftermarket piece to fit. Now I punched my holes, I'm priming right now and I wanna get it tacked in tonight. <laughs> She's tacked in and ready for weld, fully welded. She's tacked in and ready for full welding on Monday. She's a little tight in some areas. I might run the, I don't know. I might, I might maybe reposition it again on Monday, depending on how I feel. Being that it's the floor, I'm not really too worried about it being tight or like any imperfections because it's the floor you're not going to see it. you're never going to see it the only part you're going to see is from uh, from underneath and we're gonna we're gonna do filler repair on the on the welds or on, on the seams so that you can't tell it's ever been repaired right underneath so and then we'll run dynamat or whatever sound deadening on the floors and stuff on on the inside so not really worried about imperfections or has to have to So we're not really worried about imperfections on the floor itself. If it was the outside of the car, I'd make it fit way nicer, but we're just trying to get through the big parts of the floor and get on to the rest of this car. All right, catch you next week, peace. We got some wind over here in Northern California, down tree on top of a car. It was a windy one last night. Check this shit out. Not only that, look at that tree over there. Woo. Lucky there was no cars parked under that one. This one took out a whole cement block. It just missed the house, look. Or barely hit it. Holy shit, look at that. Roots, everything, out. Unfortunately, it didn't make it. Look at that shit. Oh, damn. Hope they got insurance. Well, it's Monday and we're back on the 58 again. I managed to get the floor. Got ghosts up in this bitch. And stay out. Um, so I managed to get the floor in I didn't really feel like talking because I knew when I got here, I just didn't like the fit. I was thinking about it over the weekend, of course, and I just could not leave it alone. So I took it out, took the floor pan out, and I reworked the flange on the front edge because it just wasn't matching up to the existing tow board which is where you put your your toes at, you know, that's why they call it a toe board. 
So it wasn't matching up to the toe board in the front on the flange where it sandwiches together. And I just didn't like the way it was fitting. But I kind of messed up because I should have just left the cut alone and just kind of cleaned up the edges. But I went and I grinded and I took some off the edges to kind of make it a little bit looser. Well, I ended up screwing myself because I should have reworked the flange first and just left the cut alone because then it would have been perfect. My cut was good and see, that's what happens is you freaking second guess yourself and you shouldn't. I, I, sometimes I still do it. You know, I shouldn't second guess my original cut because I knew it was pretty good and I should have just left it alone and seen where it was at first before I started cutting, but I was in a rush and I was like, you know what? I'm going to slam it in and ended up having some big gaps to fill. So that kind of sucked, but it's whatever. This floor is a little bit thin because it is a little bit pitted everywhere. This car is a little bit pitted kind of, I wouldn't say it's thin. It's thinner than normal in some areas. So in some of the areas where it was a little bit more pitted, it was kind of blowing through with the weld. And you can see that by when you're looking at the weld and like big gobs of spark are hitting the ground. Well, that's just sheet metal melting away and hitting the ground. If you look at the welds and, and how it's welding whenever I show you the videos of it. So now I have it up in the air. I got my section that I made for that center section where the seat bolts on. I got it trimmed and I'm fitting because I have this, this second floor brace, which is this one right here. This floor brace right here, it goes right in between where that piece that I made that connects the rear floor pan with the front floor pan together. And that's where your seat brace is at. I'll, I'll show you where it's at. It's right here 
well that that piece right there i made this i made this actually made this piece right here that goes in between where it connects the two right well i still have to i had to put it in there and mock it up i have it i have it tacked on the other side and now what i'm doing is i'm gonna go and i'm gonna mark all these holes it's kind of hard to see but there's some holes right here that are reference good reference marks for me so that i can drill my holes for my threaded seat bolts and it's got nut inserts on it on this bracket and my first floor brace goes right to that that connects to that to the seat brace and then my second my second floor brace which is this piece goes on there so i'm fitting the floor brace right now that's why i have it up in the air and then i gotta finish some welding that goes from underneath which is like right here so it goes from under here i gotta drill some holes on this three layer bracket or brace that goes for the firewall to the floor there's a there's a big brace on this other side and i gotta drill the holes on this side and run a weld about three spot welds on under here so i gotta do that and then i gotta make a piece for that janky right here where my finger's at for that janky ass floor panel that they sold me because it has big old gaps which i'm not hating the gaps because it was it did allow me to to adjust it a little bit better but kind of useless like why the hole i mean i guess i guess if you like can't like hammer and dolly that corner around but why why do they put a hole in there why do they put a slit with the big ass freaking gap that shit is like why all the rest of it wasn't done like that and they were tight corners there were some tight corners there like just let like why so anyways i gotta make a piece to fill that little spot where they left it open on the aftermarket floor pan in the front so that's what I'm doing before we go home. I didn't talk in the morning because I just wanted to get in here. And other than showing you the down trees in my neighborhood that almost hit houses because of the storm over here. But that's the only time I talked in the morning. When I got here, got straight to work to get it done. I want to get as much of that floor on this side in as possible. I'm realizing now that the floor hangs down past those those inner rockers so i'm gonna have to primer those first and get some primer on them get some rust protection on that before i start installing all these floors i mean this front section i already installed it and there and the front part is pretty flat but the back if you think about it where your feet go on the back seat or your when you're sitting in the back seat on one of these cars where your feet go it dips down a little bit lower because gradually the floor is going up right to meet the trunk area you know over the wheel wells over the over your rear end and anyway i'm gonna have to primer in there because it's gonna be hard to get to if i just go ahead and weld the rear floor pans in the seat the feet wells basically got it get it Good.